in control, no overwhelming feelings of rage. No, a normal amount of rage. You do revert back to Gen 4 when you sleep. Was the air horn really necessary? For comedy, absolutely. This is a multi-year journey you're about to embark on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Who's your best friend? Nikki. Uh, Spandex. Spandex is your best friend. Being a Hulk asks for balance. You have so much more to learn. Yes! So I'm clearly nailing it at all of these things. If you want to go back to your life as a lawyer, I, I respect that. He doesn't mean that. More and more eccentric superhumans are coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> we are going to launch a division for them. And I want the She-Hulk to be the face of it. Jennifer Waters. Namaste. I have a serious conflict of interest. This man tried to kill my cousin, Bruce. Yeah, that's quite all right. Oh. People only care because I'm representing Emil Blonsky. I think they care because they're like, hey, that girl's green. Jen, do your thing. God, I really like this outfit. I'm not proud of this. Miss Walters, we answer to a higher power. Our universe is on the edge of a precipice. I am a lawyer. We do things by the book. Oh, the book of Ashanti. No, the book of American uh, laws. Whether you like it or not, you're now a superhero. Let's do this. You know that friend you had in high school? Who was way cooler than you were, attractive, got all the attention from everyone. I think I'm jealous. Is that what I'm feeling? Welcome back, everyone. This will be my full She-Hulk trailer video. There's a bunch of Easter eggs here. Obviously, we see Daredevil in the trailer, probably one of the biggest things. There's a bunch of cameos in all the episodes, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes. They're going to start in a couple weeks. Like, we don't have to wait that long before we actually get episodes. There'll be nine total, and each episode is supposed to feature, like, a different big character. But obviously, the big thing in this trailer is them just teasing Hulk, training She-Hulk how to be a Hulk, basically, how to use her powers more effectively. But the funny thing they tease here is that she actually picks it up way faster than he expected, which is why they have that funny moment where she breaks the fourth wall like She-Hulk does in the comics. Breaking the fourth wall is something that she does in the comics a lot. When Bruce Banner tells her, oh, you can go back to being a lawyer in the normal world if you want to, like, you don't have to stay here in seclusion with me and continue to train for a couple years before you try to go back. Because the whole idea is that it took him years before he could become Professor Hulk and learn to coexist with normal people without just completely destroying everything in sight. One of the big differences with the She-Hulk character, and they kind of show you this across the trailer, is that most of the time she spends her time in that Professor Hulk-like state, the in-between state, where she has her intelligent mind, she can speak just fine, but she also has the power of the Hulk. So that's why you hear all the jokes about her being an eight-foot-tall green lawyer, because she spends most of her time looking like that. They are supposed to be a little bit weaker than when they're in full Hulk state. Like, she does have her own version of a full Hulk state. This is what she looks like. It's way more like the Incredible Hulk look than the Professor Banner Hulk look. But the tone that they're going with in this is more like a half-hour legal comedy, kind of like Ally McBeal, which is a deep-cut Robert Downey Jr. Easter egg because a lot of you will remember that he was actually on Ally McBeal before he came into the MCU as Iron Man. The joke when he says this is going to be a multi-year journey for you is also meant to be a backdoor reference to her future in the MCU with the Avengers characters. Obviously, she's going to cross over with other Avengers characters in the future, probably Avengers 5, Kang Dynasty, and Avengers 6, Secret Wars, now confirmed because of the Marvel panel. We basically got the entire Marvel Phase 5 and Marvel Phase 6 schedule. Now, there are a bunch of mystery movies on the Marvel Phase 6 schedule. They'll probably fill in some of those during D23 later this year, but they'll include, like, the X-Men movie, Deadpool 3, the movies that we know about after Fantastic Four, but they just haven't confirmed release dates for yet. The big idea is that Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which I just did a trailer video for, I'll link that below in the description and at the end of this. 
that's going to be the official end of Marvel Phase 4. And then the beginning of Marvel Phase 5 will start next year with Ant-Man 3 Quantum Mania. They showed off a teaser trailer for that with Kang the Conqueror, so we'll do a separate video about it later this week. But the end of Marvel Phase 5 will be the Thunderbolts movie. That's happening right after Captain America 4 New World Order. So they're probably going to set the Thunderbolts during Captain America 4. And then Marvel Phase 6 is going to begin with the Fantastic Four movie and end with Avengers 6 Secret Wars. So they're kind of doing the Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame thing where they split like one giant Avengers movie into two separate ones. I'll do a separate video about all that Avengers 5, Avengers 6 stuff because we could talk all day about that. We are going to be eating good for the next several years, including the new Daredevil series that they announced because of the big Daredevil cameo scene at the end of the trailer. Probably like the other biggest thing that people are talking about in this. I think the even bigger reveal is that they confirmed that he's going to be wearing a version of the yellow suit, which is actually his original suit in the comics. Like Daredevil started out in the yellow suit, then he got the more traditional looking full red suit that most people think of when they think of Daredevil. It's not clear if he's fighting She-Hulk here in New York City or if he's also come to California because the She-Hulk series mostly takes place in and around the Los Angeles area. That's where her law firm is based. But this is just the beginning of him coming back as Daredevil. Like, he'll get multiple different suits. And then when he does the full-on Daredevil series, there'll be 18 episodes of that, by the way. 18 episodes of Daredevil. He's supposed to have a version of the back in black suit. When Hulk is training her in how to be She-Hulk, how to handle her powers, we find out that she actually reverts to Jennifer Walter's state in her sleep. I think the whole idea with the base that Bruce Banner has here, the special laboratory with all the Stark tech, like this all Iron Man created technology that he's using here, is probably just something that he keeps on the DL when he needs to get away from civilization because of the way he exists as the Hulk, like he's worried about hurting other people. They make a bunch of jokes about ripping clothes apart when she hulks out. Spandex is your best friend. Later, presumably, she'll get her comic book uniform. That might not be till the end of the series, though. One of the other funniest moments from this is when she full-on flips him the bird after he pushes her off the cliff, just trying to push her over the edge so that she learns how to handle her own emotional state. They have all these jokes about what goes on inside her law firm, like the whole idea that people make fun of lawyers for being more bloodthirsty than vampires. Like, lawyers are worse than the villains in the Marvel Universe. The way that her boss basically tells her that she is forced to defend Emil Blonsky abomination. So if it wasn't clear, he's being prosecuted either for what he did during the events of The Incredible Hulk or something else that he wrecked recently, and he's been in prison for that. And her law firm in Los Angeles develops a superhero division where she's forced to defend a bunch of these supervillains and superheroes of crimes that they were accused of. There was actually a promo that they released for She-Hulk at Comic-Con where you call a phone number. This is the actual phone number here. It's a real phone number, like you actually get a phone message when you call it. And it's meant to be like an advertisement for her legal services. Like, are you an Asgardian god who's been accused of destroying property every time you open up a Bifrost? She jokes about Ultron saying that, have you been accused of creating a sentient AI that goes on to wreck half of the planet? Call me, Jennifer Walters, to represent you, basically. So that's how they get to all the different cameo scenes in different episodes. Like, you see some of them in the trailer. Like, they're meant to be a bunch of funny C and D list characters that a lot of you probably never heard of. But there will be a couple big recognizable ones, like Abomination and Daredevil, for instance. And it makes sense that she would run into characters like Daredevil, who is a really good lawyer, as he said, who also spends a lot of his time defending superheroes as a lawyer. They did confirm that this character here is Frogman, right out of the comics. Super deep cut. Some of these characters I'm not so sure about. Like, I'm not sure who the character jumping out the window is supposed to be. There's an elf character pretending to be a judge. Like, it's kind of like Loki pretending to be Odin, changing the enchantment so that he reveals himself. The funny joke here is that when she's walking by in her law firm, like all the other lawyers walk out the door just to stare and gawk at her like, wow, eight foot tall green lawyer. If you look in the background though, zoom in enhance, in this guy's office, he has a bunch of comic book covers. Then they have all these scenes with Abomination pretending to be good, obviously paying off all the Wong Easter eggs from the Shang-Chi movie with them fighting in the ring together. Because Wong is like the other big cameo during this. I believe the way they're playing it is, is that they were trying to rehabilitate Abomination. Wong was helping out with that just because he's so powerful. He would be useful to them, but I think they're trying to set him up for the Thunderbolts. Like he's pretending if he's gone good, but he's kind of like John Walker version of good. Like John Walker, US agent, is kind of a dirtbag, but he's not an evil character. He just does a lot of really shady stuff. They directly reference the events of Incredible Hulk. I have a conflict of interest. This person tried to kill my cousin, Bruce Banner, and that is accurate to the comic. She is Bruce Banner's cousin. But the funny thing is, is she's referencing the events of the Edward Norton version of The Incredible Hulk. The woman that crashes into the courtroom here is a version of Titania. You see her in a couple other parts of the trailer. She's a big She-Hulk villain in the comics, so they're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe a couple times. 
They set up all the jokes with her Tinder profile or whatever her dating website app she's using with everybody loving her kicking the crap out of people as She-Hulk using her powers. Like they have all these jokes about people being super thirsty for Jennifer Walters. Like everyone would love the idea of death by Snoo Snoo because that's basically what's going on during the trailer footage. Like this dude is gonna have the time of his life while she just pounds the hell out of him, literally and metaphorically. When Wong shows up and says they have a greater responsibility to something in the universe almost ended basically, he's talking about incursions, time runs out, the events of the Doctor Strange 2 movie. He also references the book of Vishanti, which RIP has been destroyed now. Also, I think the clever reference here when he references the greater purpose that they serve in the MCU, this greater power, is also meant to be a sly wink at Kang the Conqueror because literally Avengers 5 is Kang Dynasty, like it's Avengers versus Kang. And now based on the Loki season 2 teaser, we know currently there is a version of Kang the Conqueror who's ruling over this version of the timeline. The character with the magical looking weapons and these other guys here might be from Wrecking Crew, which I believe are supposed to be villains during the series. They're like a small villain group. You see her hook out. She ends up wrecking the hell out of them probably. But we'll probably get a couple more trailers before the first episode drops, but it will be episode one on premiere day, August 17th. So of course I'll do videos for all the episodes, just like I do for all the other Disney Plus series. If you think you know what some of these other minor C and D list characters are supposed to be besides like Frogman, like the Bat, and some of these other characters, let me know in the comments. I'm still working my way through a bunch of other Comic-Con trailer videos and there was a bunch of other trailers during the Marvel panel too. I'll do videos for everything. Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of those. I'll try to get them out as quickly as possible. Everyone click here for my new Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever trailer video and click here for my brand new Spider-Man freshman year trailer video and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.